And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Jump the shark is a phrase that we have seen constantly about a TV show or actually anything nowadays that has lost its way. Uh, making up odd stories. Well, here we have Jump the Shark, the storytelling game. There's not a lot inside the box here for Jump the Shark because Jump the Shark is using players as a storytelling outlet. Let me show you how it works. The first thing you do on your turn is you pick a story from one of the story cards or a pitch. For example, Surf Zombies Made a Mint. This one's totally off the hook. The zombies is a shark, a buff sheriff, and a hot science babe. Have to track it down. And then you're going to have different rounds of the game. Each player in the game is going to be given some of these gems. You're going to get one of these big ones, which is worth five, and then five little ones. So you have ten to start the game off with. And then you're going to deal cards out, starting with the first player uh, is going to get a three card, then four, then five, then six. Let's say there's four players playing, then seven, eight, nine, and ten. And basically, those numbers are just kind of there to remind you what the bidding number is going to be. And what's, so we read the first thing here, zombie shark attacks. That's the first thing for the first round. So player three would go first, and he would say, um... I th you know, the, the, there's some people in the water, and suddenly severed limbs come to the surface, and they think, what is it, and it's a zombie shark, or he makes up some ridiculous story like that. He has to put one of his chips in the middle when he tells a story, so the pot is now one. Now, what the next player can do is they can either add one and continue the story, or they can, for they can call the first person. If they call the first person, his number currently is a three, and he would simply have to roll higher than a three, which is not difficult to do. The next person, if he was called, would have to roll higher than a four. So this continues until someone is called. So let's say uh, the second time around, this guy decides to call him and say, you have to roll higher than a seven. Then each other player can increase that to say, no, I, I'm going to take steal the call. And next person can pay three. Oh, I'm going to steal the call. And you can go around till somebody has taken the call. They can even push all their chips in and say, I want the call. So then this person rolls. He rolled a 10. So he is the winner and takes everything here. The caller gets nothing. If he would have rolled lower than a seven, then the person who made the call would have taken all the chips. Then after that happens, the winner, whether it's the caller or the person who was called and had just told the last story, decides which person in the group has told the best story. They can't pick themselves, they have to pick someone else, and that person gets five gems for being such a good storyteller. You continue until all five parts of the story are told, and at the end of that, whoever has the most chips value is the winner. I guess I'll start out with the most obvious thing. This is basically a ripoff. I really feel bad about this because this has potential to be something great, but when you open this box and you get your little bag of chips, okay, that's fine, and then you, f you get, I think, like five or six story cards, come on, put in a hundred. Put some effort into this. Find me some stories, not, I mean, I don't wanna keep doing these same five or six stories all the time. Okay, let's talk about it as a story game. Using the pathetically small amount of cards that comes in this game. How is the storytelling aspect? Well, it's okay. Because the story gives you, let me, let me give you an example of a story here. The thing is, you have to tell a story, return to plan X here. And part one, kid, there ain't no aliens. Part two, where are the adults? Part three, we're all going to die. Part four, I've got a plan. Part five, final battle. So let's say, for example, part three, we're all going to die. And the first person says, oh, and, and I looked up and there were the alien spaceships and it started shooting lasers down and we shot it. We're all going to die. And the next person says, and I didn't know what to do. The house walls started burning down and, and everything started looking bad. The next person says, and, but then super palooza came and fought against the aliens and beat them back. And you go around and tell the stories. Then you get to the next one. I've got a plan. Well, wait a minute. We already did the plan. We already, the thing already happened. And so it's kind of, 
it kind of messes up the flow of the story. I, I, it, it felt there were many times where we had to stop the story and say, well, look, uh, you know, you can't do that yet because of, it's going to happen later on in the story. And if you do that now, you're basically wrapping up the story for everybody else. How are we supposed to add more to it? Um, and so that, that could be problematic. The other problem with this then is the bidding itself. Uh, I mean, trying to push other people uh, to bid, it makes sense. It's a fun mechanic to have in games, but it doesn't mesh at all with the storytelling. It doesn't make any sense, frankly. I mean, why am I suddenly making people roll dice so that, that they can tell, tell the story? It just, it's hard to explain, but that mechanic, while it's neat in its own game, doesn't, mi doesn't mix with the storytelling game. Not to mention, you really have absolutely no idea if what someone's going to roll on a die. So what does it matter? Here's the deal. I really, I think Jump the Shark's a funny name. I think the storytelling aspect is interesting. I think the calling people on the gambling is interesting, but it doesn't come together that well. And then when you double that with the fact that it really feels like someone came up with an idea, quick, drew up a picture, threw it into a box, and just trying to sell it onto you, I am really, really disappointed with this. This is, this is a waste of money for you because they could have gone to so much more effort, they could have made this so much better, and it felt like it was just thrown together and then packaged so you see, oh, jump the shark, ha, 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 and then when you open up, you're going to be disappointed. And that's, that's shameful, I think, really. And, I, and I, if they had included 50 cards in here with interesting storylines and maybe a little bit more artwork, then I, I still don't know that I would have liked the gambling mixed with the storytelling aspect, but I wouldn't have said you're getting ripped off, but as it is, don't buy this. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.